What's up everybody? Nick here. Welcome to the hill. What is up everybody? Man, I am scrambling today, but uh, today ain't about me, man. Today is about my guests, as it is most days, but uh, we've got Derek West on the show today, y'all. Proven racer, been racing for a minute now. He's, he's got a lot, uh, a lot we can all learn from for sure, and, and uh, some good stories to tell. So y'all stand by, and we grab a cup of coffee here, and we're gonna get this kicked off. I know. In case you needed to be reminded who Derek West was, I mean, what better footage? I, I think that's my favorite footage from Eagle Eye Productions uh, is um, 
Derek hitting that V notch, man, at Mid America. Uh, speaking of that, man, huge shout out to both Mid America and Eagle Eye Productions, uh, big supporters of this show, um, sponsors of the show. Uh, fit in nicely with our guys at Deep Pass Photography, John at, at Black Dog Photography, High Octane Films, man. Uh, we got race teams that believe in this show and are and are stepping up now. Cash Lacroix Racing uh, sponsoring the show. Um, huge shout out to John Martin at Canyon Coolers. I think Canyon Coolers are going to fit in perfectly with uh, with our bouncer family. That's for sure. Um, and then we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Team Odd Six Racing, y'all. Uh, presenters of the show. Huge shout out to Matt and and uh, everybody at at Voodoo Tires, Team Odd Six Racing. Same same thing. Well, listen, uh, I'm not going to uh, pretend like I'm not giddy like a schoolgirl and want to hear from my guest today. So, without further ado, let's bring him on. Mr. Derek West in the house, man. We really appreciate you hanging out with us today, Derek. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, we've we've seen you on a couple of other podcasts and and stuff like that. Um, you know, just to give you a, a, a quick rundown of of the show. Um, uh, we we just like we just talk rock bouncing, man. We we love. Uh, all things rock bouncing, rock racing, everything that goes along with it, uh, UTVs, um, uh, the big bouncers or Ultra 4 cars, and then uh, RCs even. Uh, I think we briefly talked about that. Uh, and you even said that you have a, a replica. Uh, which one do you have a replica of? Which car? Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll break that out here in a little bit. So oh, cool. I've got a okay. replica of my, of my last car okay. that uh, Nick Ward made okay uh, and then my wife actually purchased it from him for me as a gift on uh, a birthday or christmas so i don't remember what it was but she she got that for me as a surprise and it's pretty cool um you know it's a it's a cool car what he did and then uh, just memorabilia of it oh I'm sure glad I had it. absolutely well hey um you know what we like to start with our guests is to just get a quick background man we want to know where you got started in off-roading and then eventually off-road racing can you give us a quick uh quick heads up well i'll see if i can make it quick so <laughs> uh, i've been doing this for i think about 20 years now okay uh but so i started out uh, when i was 15 actually so my dad bought a uh actually he traded he did a barter for a uh, 1976 cj5 uh, it was like it was worth eight, like eight hundred dollars. It was a pile of junk. It was rusted out, um, but we got that and kind of it was a project together. And then we had a local Jeep guy, John's Four by Four and More. We found him. He was helping us fix it up. And one of the things that my dad uh, did was make me go over there. And John Lloyd of John's Four by Four taught me how to work on it. Awesome. Um, and then so I so I had a Jeep from the time that I was 16, um, and so I wheeled with clubs. And, and um, anyway, so I, I got into a club years down the road and uh, had a couple guys there that, uh, that I wheeled with, uh, said, hey, you need to come to this competition. When we went to this competition, nobody could make this hill. We think we could have made it. Um, uh, Richie Keller and Kyle Keller. Kyle's actually here with me tonight. We're actually working on this. I'm trying to get it put together to go to the um, Hooter Holler uh, this weekend for the um, event down there. And uh, anyway, so I put I was racing ATVs at the time, and I went ahead and put something together. Um, got a full cage and you know all the stuff that I had to have. At the time, I didn't even have a cage. At, uh, but by now, I'm in a YJ, by the way. Uh, so I, I had some C two CJ5s. Uh, sprung over Dana 44s and ARBs. I actually pulled the axles out of those that Jeep and put it under a YJ because I was at the point where I wanted fuel injection. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. but, so I went and did a, a race in Hot Springs, Arkansas, um, which was really similar to what we're doing now with these rock bouncing events. You know, it wasn't uh, a bounty hill, but it was woods racing up and down hills for time, um, and that that's kind of where I started. Um, but then from there I did uh, We Rock, uh, XRA, um, 
Mo Rock. Um, oh, I did uh, R Rock. <laughs> and trying to think of what else it was. But then, you know, somewhere along the way, the Ultra Four stuff started. King the Hammer started doing that. Um, so it got me away from that. And, you know, that takes a lot more focus and car prep to do that sort of things. And then some of these other uh, sanctioned bodies went away. And then, you know, in the meantime, the rock bouncing scene was kind of growing over in the background. So I'm off over here doing this. Rock bouncing's coming up. And, um, you know, I didn't. Didn't exactly know what it was at first. You know, in the beginning, it was a lot of uh, bounty hills, and uh, I really wasn't interested in bounty hills. Um, you know, I work on this thing all the time, and bounty hills were just not what I wanted to do to it. Um, you know, and I don't have the big, huge axles, and um, you know, it's part of my things. If I get airborne, I'm I kind of I lift. I'm not super good at you know big air land on the ground full and throttle. Um, you know, I just I don't have the huge two-inch shafts and all that to handle that. Uh, but anyway, so it turned into some courses, where it was racing courses. Uh, some of them still have hard hills. You know, you still crash. Um, and, uh, I, man, I've been having a blast. So I've been doing that for the last three years, uh, some different event, events. So I've done the uh, Pro Rock Race to Riches. I've done a few of their other events. Um, and... Uh, been been having a good time with it absolutely uh it's the outlaw race that's coming up this weekend that you guys are prepping for right yeah yeah so i think i'm in my fourth year of uh racing the outlaw uh, off-road racing series uh that's just been a great series it's a good good bunch of people that put it on it's put it on by racers uh so they really um take the the racers viewpoint into account um you know and try to put on a good show and do the best um, you know, it's a balancing act of keeping the crowd satisfied because the crowd wants to see huge gnarly hills and big crashes, and the racers want a course that's a doable course. Sure. Uh, you know, where they're not going to, you know, and everybody's got their own opinion, but a majority of them want a doable course that's difficult, but they can complete and have fun. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, are, are you going to be at the Outlaw Finals at Mid America? Uh, yes, in fact, I was talking with my wife today about uh, making some reservations for that. So, awesome. uh, I guess the cabin rental opened yesterday, okay. and so okay. they're sold out today. So we're trying to figure out a place to to stay. Yeah, uh, wow. For that. Yeah, we're planning on being there for that. Awesome. Well, uh, um, I I'm excited. It's going to be my first outlaw race, uh, so I, I'm excited to uh, definitely get some footage of you there. I'll I'll come up and introduce myself again. Of, of course, but uh, uh, I got to go to the Pro Rock event at Mid America just recently. Wow, what a park! What a place! <laughs> uh, let's see, we got uh, all kinds of people chiming in here, Derek. So I, I, I'm not gonna I'm gonna try not to interrupt you, but I definitely want to get these guys' uh, questions in for sure. Uh, first of all, Dallas Meadows is watching with us. Helen Pyle and eight others watching with them. Curtis Hazard. Jason Eldridge, Zach Kilgore in the house. Uh, let's see, Jesse Williams watching with us from Racing on the Rocks there. Rob Wyman, we got guys watching from coast to coast, Derek, uh, from New Hampshire to California. So that's pretty cool. Harold Thomas. Uh, Curtis. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dwayne Gibson, Rodney Ruane. Uh, let's see, Jake Terry. Curtis, uh, some videos prove otherwise, Derek. Badass rig behind you. Um, Jason Eldridge, Nick, has Derek done King of the Hammers or plan to? Uh, yeah, I think you have. We can talk about that if you'd like. Um, Curtis Hazard, uh, Harold Thomas, Curtis, Curtis Hazard for real, bro. It's just my life now and normal to tune in every night as often as possible. Uh, I appreciate that, Harold, talking about watching, watching the show. Um, I hate to bounce around, but I mean, they, they do bring up a good point. When was your first hammers? Uh, and, and you want to give us, give us a rundown of your, your time out there? Yeah. So my, my first King of Hammers race was 2009. And, um, so I, at the time I had a, uh, pro modified chassis. So I'd actually built that to, to go into the pro modified class of we rock uh, so we were doing rock crawling with it and then also doing xrra okay. uh, so it was a smaller car had a little supercharged v6 in it cutting brakes and arbs 
Um, took it out there. I think I had a 10-ish gallon fuel cell, something like that, and I had uh, uh, bypass um, air shocks is, is all I had. So I didn't have a coil <laughs> over at all. I had bypass air shocks. You know, because for the rock crawl stuff, that's what you ran. You could raise the car, lower the car, uh, and, they, and they work decent. And um, um, that race, I was actually having a pretty good run and then uh, stopped to put some fuel in and had, had water in my gas. So uh, a lot of people that get fuel out in California get water in their gas, and I figured out don't, don't buy your fuel there. Anymore. Wow. Wow. Uh, Cam Camilla is watching. Says hi, that's Derek. My mom. mom's, my mom's mom. watching. That's awesome. Uh, my mom watches all the time too, Derek. So I love, I love w when the family gets involved. Man, that's that is absolutely awesome. Uh, hi, Miss Camilla. Uh, very excited to have Derek on here. He's a, he's a hell of a driver. Um, so 2009, and you've been pretty consistent all the way through, dry, racing every every year. Uh, yeah. So I've raced every year. Um, as far as consistent, no, I'm all over the place. <laughs> so well, yeah. I've had some good finishes. Um, had uh, oh a third, a couple fifths, a sixth, and I forget what all it is. But um, you know, and then you know some DNFs. So sure. Uh, so uh, I've, I've finished it. You know, so multiple times. You know, so now when I race it, it's not you know trying to finish. It's we're, we're trying to win, trying to get on the podium. So. King of the Hammers is a whole planet different than what you guys raced last weekend, or was it last weekend? At, no, the weekend before, the, the Pro Rock weekend. Uh, I was at Pro Rock, and you guys were in Tennessee at AOP, right? Yep. Whole different yes. ball game. What do you do to prepare for that, man? What do you, how do you change, what do you change? Um... That's my normal. I change everything to go out there to California to do that race. Okay, okay. Or vice versa. So, then. But, yeah. So as, as far as car prep, you know, I don't, I don't change anything. I don't change the setup. Um, you know, sometimes it rains and we got to prepare for that. Um, but uh, other than that, it's um, just having the car ready to go. Yep. Uh, you know, so. and, and what's a – give us a typical race week, you know, uh, Monday to race day, you know. What do you, what do you do for a um, what do you do for a living? What what do you do in uh, you know what I mean? So, so I do solar energy. So uh, so me and my wife um, own and operate a, a solar energy company. Cool. And uh, so so this week, so this is this is race week. Yep. So here we are Thursday. Yep. Um, but so I've been shorthanded at work. So I've been out working, um, you know, long hours, uh, you know. Day before yesterday, I had a you know 13-hour day, and then yesterday I had a long day, and it was just wiped out by the time I got home. And uh, so, but I've been having a problem with this car back here, so we're actually working out, we're trying to get it figured out. So um, we think we may have found um, an issue, so we're we're gonna do some testing and give it a try. But um, so I've got Kyle here with me; he's getting ready to do put some spark plugs uh, back in, um, and. Uh, I, I, do some testing and trying to get it ready to go to the race this weekend. So, um, but uh, otherwise, uh, used to I had a motorhome. I actually sold it here a few months ago. But um, you know, it's packing the trailer and packing your motorhome and um, trying to get things lined up and in place so you can leave. Um, you know, this one's a close one for me. It's an hour away, so it's no big oh, deal. But you perfect. know, on, on <laughs> other races, you know, I've traveled all over the country. Oh, sure. Um, you know, King of the Hammers in Northern California, and uh, raced a, done a lot of racing in Pennsylvania and Tennessee and Indiana, Ohio, all kinds of places. Um, you know, and so it's it's you got to work ahead to get everything in order and get um, you know places for your pets to stay and you know what your daughter doing and you know it's just it's um, it's a lot. It's a lot too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and this is all on you, right? I mean, you have your your sponsors and stuff, but you this is this is passion, just to race, right? Yeah. So um, you know, I I like to go out and do these events, and I like to get out around the people, the great people. Uh, I like to wheel. You know, it's fun. Um, you know, and I like to throw down some big horsepower and go up a hill and make a good time and. You know, it's a sense of achievement and compete with the 
the guys out there are good. And, um, you know, I still enjoy that. That's awesome. Um, uh, you kind of gave us a quick synopsis of the vehicles that you were running when you were younger. Uh, you are in a Jimmy's, Jimmy Smith uh, chassis now. You came from a Jimmy Smith chassis. You want to tell us uh, a little bit about the, the transition, what, what you changed from last buggy to this one? Yeah, so, and so it's a Jimmy's 4x4 out of I'm Colorado. Sorry. I'm so sorry. It's different than Jimmy's Smith. I'm sorry. Um, thank so you. Just, just for people that don't know. Yep, uh, thank yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, I'll just move this around a little bit. Sure. So oh, there it is. <laughs> this is my old chassis. Uh, I've got it stripped down. I'm getting ready to get it all put back together um, and you know, sell it, I guess. Is what I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> so this had a uh, straight axle. Uh, I actually built a new housing for it uh, with uh, shocks on the axle. Um, and so that's one of the things I'll change. I'll show you that. Uh, the belly on this is a little bit different than my uh, car that I'm running now. Uh, and the links are a little bit closer together here. Uh, so, you know, the, the chassis design of what Jimmy's did here um, is a little bit different. I mean, you can see distinct differences uh, in the chassis lines. Um, but, um, you know, overall, the, the midline looks still the same. So they, the front area changed the, the more of a racer look, you know, uh, Jimmy's 4x4 is always known for having the fiberglass uh, hoods. Um, Jeep, Escalade, um, I think they've got a Raptor one, some different hoods. But this one is just a simple uh, aluminum hood just to give visibility and, and be, you know, pure race car and, and um, just be able to see better. So, but so here I've got a leading arm in the front. I don't know if you can see that. I move this around so I can it. <clears throat> so uh, what I wanted to change from uh, my other car to this one was I wanted to get more up travel here. And so, but I didn't want the shock sticking away through the hood. Uh, so I worked with Jimmy's and they had made a leading arm design before. They'd done some rearings and stuff, but it's a little difficult to package uh, the leading arm with the front engine, uh, clear the drive shaft. Um, you know, this car's got pretty good steering, so, you know, it's got tight steering. Uh, so we had to go a little bit wider, so this is like two inches wider than my other car to clear everything. Um, you know, and they, they do this all in CAD, so they've got a ton of time in CAD and mulling this all up. But, yeah. uh, but basically, we were able to get uh, about four more inches of travel out of the front end here. Um, you know, and it just it's made a huge difference. So uh, before, you know, I just felt like I'd... I'd um, you know, was bottoming out pretty fast on the initial hit, and just now, I, now the car, um, you know, the shock sits better more in the mid zone than what it did on the other one, and then it's got more shaft to, to slow things down. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> see the back of the car. Uh, but the, so my lower links are, you know, instead of being more narrow like my old car, they're out a little bit. Okay. And we did that for some more stability for. Um, more anti-roll. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's the that's the major differences uh, between them. You know, uh, but otherwise, they're still running a lot of the same parts. Um, so I'm running a uh, uh, LS3. So uh, I've got a couple different motors. But the, the one that's in this car right now is a, a stroked LS3 uh, with an Edelbrock E4 supercharger. And so uh, and I work with Show Me Speed uh, on all the engine stuff. And then, uh, then my other engine's uh, LSX. Okay. Naturally aspirated, yeah. not. Uh, no, it's super. No, so. Oh, it is. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Do you do you like uh, a, a lot of guys are going to that that package, if you will, that LS motor with the supercharger on on top? Um, would you say that that's in the Ultra Four world? <laughs> that's probably the your best bet because that. You know, right now, power with the supercharger. So that's my opinion. So you know, I I want to think that I started the trend. So I've been doing this for you know, and there was other guys before me. So I wasn't the first, obviously, but I've been running this for six years now, I think. And the reason that I went to it is 
you know, if I go back to that Pro Mod that I was talking about, it was a V6. It was a 3.8 liter uh, supercharged. So they were like a Bu out of a Buick and two other cars. Um, and that thing would just get it. So, you know, I had an LS motor that was tuned, you know, 500 horse, whatever it was. I thought, man, this thing is just kind of doggy off the line compared to my v little v factory V6, you know, that I had. And it was just that supercharger. And so it's like you said, it's just instant. It's right now. There's no lag. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I like that. I, you know, I don't even run pump gas uh, or, or uh, race gas, I mean. Um, I'm running this car in E85. Um, so... Um, wow, I, I like it. that's awesome! That is uh, yeah. freaking awesome, man. Uh, I love hearing about guys that are. I mean, because you, you could probably take that out and trail ride it. No, it, it would stay cool and. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I mean. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that, I guess that's one of the differences of my car versus your traditional bouncer. Sure. Um, you know, and, and my car is not not necessarily built to be a bouncer. However, I thought about building bouncer and I thought what would I change for me and it was really just the size of the fuel cell and get rid of a radio you know intercom system two things that I don't need so I thought well it's good you can do a math um, but um, but yeah this thing can run hard all day long as long as I don't break it yeah. you know it, it doesn't overheat you know it's got you know massive fueling system on the uh, radiator and the transmission and the steering you know, all, all of it yeah uh, what do you run for drivetrain components? Uh, your ac you know, your axle housings. What's all that? Yeah, so I, I run uh, Spider Tracks uh, housings. Uh, so the Spider Nines. Uh, I run their knuckle, uh, their shafts. So I've got forty spline uh, Spider Tracks three hundred inch shafts, um, front and rear. Uh, I also run their uh, ultimate user bearings, uh, which have worked great. For me, um, so it's surprising that Uno bearing holds up as good as it does. To, um, you know all the abuse that that I send it through. You know that you know I can do a race in hundreds of miles. Yeah. So I, yeah. I put a lot of time on it. You know, and, and uh, you. But the, sorry, you you made a comment earlier about I don't have the big axles like the bouncers do, but I mean, man, you're doing you're running all day long in rocks. I mean. You guys are beating the snot out of these things, dude. I I don't. I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that they may be physically bigger, but I I mean, whatever, whatever they're doing is is working. Uh, uh, some of the other drivers, um, you know, Ford Fordzilla runs uh, runs a smaller housing. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, Jake Pike. Uh, Larry Krogh, I think, runs the spider housings. I'm not, I'm not positive mm -hmm. on that one, but, but I mean, yeah, and they do. Uh, I'm probably heavier than they are. You know, I've got a lot of stuff on mine. You know, uh, Jake's very good at building a very light car. Um, you know, and maybe, maybe this stuff will hold up better than what I think. Um, you know, it, it's tough and does stand up to what I do. Um, but you know, part of my success over the years has been. Uh, not breaking my car, not breaking my axle. Um, yeah, and so that's maybe a fault that I have when I go to doing some of the rock bouncing things and then you catch air and my gut reaction is to lift. Uh, you know, where some of these guys, they catch air and they just stay in it, they land on the ground, full throttle, and keep on the go. Yep. Um, Yep, yeah, mo momentum is key. I, I'm not. You're in Missouri. Where are you from? Yeah, Missouri. Yeah, Springfield, okay. Missouri. Yeah. So you you've driven in the, uh, the the snow and ice and stuff like. That. I grew up in Maine, so uh, uh, definitely momentum is very important. <laughs> uh, so you don't get stuck or, or you know lose lose momentum. Yeah. Heading so up the hill. Well, I learned a lot of momentum uh, when I was racing ATV. So you know, I had a two wheel drive. Under 400 EX, and that's where I learned momentum. About you know, you, you get your speed at the bottom of the hill, you don't get on the hill and then try to get speed. Right, uh, that's, that's right. right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how uh, how long did you race ATVs? Uh, just for a few years. Yeah. So I was racing it for a few years, and that's when um, kind of started getting into the uh, some of the Jeep stuff. Um, 
you know, and I was into off-roading anyway, and then the other part of it is I'm starting to get into my adult life, and, you know, as I'm ATV racing, I'm like, man, I watch these guys crash all the time and break arms and legs, and, but, you know, as soon as I do that, you know, I'm, I'm in trouble. You know, I won't be able to work, and <laughs> so, yeah. so I like to have the roll cage and seat belts. And, oh, for sure. Switched over. Absolutely. Uh, real quick here, Eric Meese, this, these guys are saying the sound is going in and out. I, I haven't had any issues, guys. Uh, maybe your maybe your service. I, I have I have good service, and I can hear them. Uh, I can hear them pretty good here. Uh, Miss Christina Davidson, the media or the uh, marketing director at, at Mid America, says if you can't dry camp in anything at uh, Middle America for Outlaw, there are lots of hotel options just 15 miles from the park. Uh, in yeah, Grove. I think we're looking somewhere around the lake area. Okay, okay, cool. I, I dry camp, but my pickup truck's a little tight. Okay, yeah, yeah. Christina's great, man. Um, Super, super helpful. Let's see here. Jason's asking, uh, what about Baja? Do you do any desert racing other than what you do in Ultra 4? So I've never done Baja. Uh, I have done uh, some desert racing. So I've done um, the Silver State 300, uh, which was the best in the desert race, uh, which around was around uh, Vegas. You just kind of circled out in the mountain. And it, it was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then we also did Vegas Reno, uh, which starts just outside of Vegas and then in Reno. Um, and 500 mile race or something like that. But, um, I enjoy it. Um, you know, this car, it'd probably be a blast. Um, the car that I was doing, it was two cars ago from, from what I have now. Uh, and it was fun, but, it, you know, they're not desert cars. Uh, and, uh, you know, I like to go fast, but I still like my off you know, I'm a rock crawler at heart. I wanted some hill times. I want some rocks. You know, something in there. Absolutely. You know, sometimes water just, you know, for miles gets a little old. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Forrest, some, uh, one of the gentlemen watching from up in Maine says, I've done Silver State as a rider. <laughs> yeah, and I really enjoyed that one. That was just a, it was a great course. It was smooth. It wasn't super rough. Uh, you went up in the mountains, it was, it was scenic, you went up just out in the middle of nowhere, and you just really saw the amount of land that was out there. Um, you know, I was out there racing, there was other racers out there, and there's times that I could, I felt like I could see 30 miles in front of me, and there was nobody else around, just me out there by myself. It was a little different feeling, um, but uh, it, it was fun. Yeah, wow. That's, uh, what do you, what do you think... Because the rock crawling stuff, not the XRRA, but we rock and stuff, that's a heck of a lot slower pace than what you're doing at, what you were doing at uh, AOP last weekend. What do you prefer? Um, I mean, I like it all. So the, the rock crawling as a driver or a teammate, you know, a, a spotter, is, is a lot of fun. But, you know, it's more like chess. You know, so you're making these slower movements, and, you know, it's about knowing your rules, um, you know, where to take, you know, eat a cone and then try to make one. Uh, but, you know, it was hard stuff. It was very difficult stuff. You had to communicate well. You know, so as a, as a driver, it was a lot of fun. You know, as a spectator, sometimes that's not as much fun to watch. Um, you know, there are still big things in there climbs and downhills and crashes um, that they do watch or, or do like. Um, you know, and then the fast stuff, you know, is obviously fun. You pedal to metal. Um, and, it, you know, it's more spectator friendly. Um, but, I mean, it, it's all fun. You know, it's different. Um, but I've, I've enjoyed it all. I, I remember watching. I, I went to WyoTech in Laramie, and I remember watching all these little rock crawler events starting to pop up, you know, and and before it was we rock and and uh and, you know back when shannon campbell was running a oh man a flatty i think and it was a red red jeep with a cage in it i think and uh, okay and walker evans walker evans came out with a uh he had like a, a, a chevy blazer i think initially and then he had an s10 
uh, that yeah, something like front that. rear and, steer. And he, yeah, it was IFS. Uh, he, it might, yeah. might have been IRF. Too. I, I, I don't even know on that. I believe you're right. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very cool stuff, man, to see that innovation. And then you kind of saw that, and then to see where we're at now is really cool stuff really and you've been there since the beginning man that's that's super cool uh, uh i'll be 40 this year I, how old were you when you first started fifth well you said 15 was when you uh well yeah that's when i just got into it so my first race i think i was 22 maybe 23 okay yep. uh, i think i might have been 22 yeah so i was just starting a family and and uh in school and stuff like that so yeah yeah that's cool man that's very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Eric Me says We Rock is really technical driving. Yes, I agree absolutely. Uh, and and Derek said it right. He, he you know a chess a chess match is, is absolutely right. Um, Curtis Hazard, they came to Mountain Mud Run a few years back. It's crazy where they can go so easily. I agree. I agree. Sean Keller joining us. Uh, Keller RC Performance. I think. Uh, Derek's got a Derek's got an RC for us to check out here. That's cool. Yeah, so this is it here. That's cool. I thought right? you might appreciate this. Heck yeah. Commander. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Nick, Nick Moore made this. Um, yeah, so this is just a almost identical yeah. copy of, of that car. Well done. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and so, and I actually sent him my design he put on there it's like and i guess this is made out of like uh brake tubing or brake line yes sir yeah yeah yep. it made a brake line and i get to raise it and, yep um anyway i just really impressed with the craftsmanship he got my lights right he even got you know me sitting in here with my nitto helmet suit so on. cool man awesome. well it done was. It was, yeah uh, yeah sean keller says very cool yeah yeah, we like I said, we got people that watch that that compete in everything uh, on this show. So there, you know, there's people that are into UTVs or side by sides and big bouncers and RCs. I mean, uh, a little bit of everything, but all rock bouncing, rock racing related. You know, so it's a yep. pretty yep. diverse crowd. We're all family, right? That's right. That's absolutely right, man. Um, speaking of that, you know, I, I like to get everybody's opinion. Um, you know, what do you? Uh, how, how is the you know what what is your overview of rock racing rock bouncing you know you ju you just said it man that's pretty much what we what we call it is a, a rock racing family off-road family um tell tell us about your your experience um so that was so the family part of things is what i, I really enjoyed and that's probably what's kept me in it for so long um, you know, back in the Dream Rock and the XR day, days, we'd be traveling all over the place. Um, you know, I met all these people that I didn't know before, and we'd go somewhere together and go eat dinner and go do things and have fun. Um, you know, I'm still friends with a lot of those people today. Uh, you know, of course, now you've got Facebook, so you can keep up with everybody and what they're doing. Um, yeah, so I, I, I like it. Um, you know, the rock bouncer part of it, um, you know, I don't know a lot of those guys uh, as well, but I've been, I feel like they've been warming up to me. I felt like it's a little bit of an outsider at first, bringing my non-rock bouncer car to events, but, uh, man, it's just, there's some great people in there, and, um, you know, they're always, people are super nice to me, and, um, you know, I just appreciate, you know, going out and racing with those guys and uh, having a good time. You know, these guys have got these huge motors and, uh, you know, the cars and the rock bouncing are just coming along so much. Uh, you know, some of these guys are running 1,400 horsepower, maybe more than that, I don't even know. Uh, the suspensions are, are coming way along. You know, Timmy's got the IFS working now. and uh, So it's really neat to, you know, so I've watched some of the, the sports that I was in, the Ultra 4 and um, XRA and we rock some of those advanced like you're talking about kind of start with Shannon and Pinky and Walker Evans and you know you see the same thing going on now um, with the rock bouncing and of course you know Timmy's leading the charge there he's pretty innovative and you know builds a lot and changes things that's just fun to watch 
Absolutely. Uh, speaking uh, of rock bouncers, ex of accept, rock bouncers, accepting you, uh, Jay Stortz just chimed in here. Derek is a heck of a driver. I'm sure he's going to lay it down at Hooter Holler. We are about 30 minutes out. I love watching Derek run that car. So uh, Jay Stortz, Stortz Racing there. Uh, uh, I don't know if you – I'm sure you did. I'm sure everybody has it at this point. But uh, his son's uh, second run – at the NRRA event last weekend, man, that pirouette or backflip with a half twist or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I mean, just straight sending it, man. Um, you know, I, I've seen you straight send it on that hill, that same hill before throwing it down at a, at a, uh, event at, at, uh, Hawk pride a few years back in the old car. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, Which hill was it? It, it was um, so more all the way to the right, if you know what I'm saying, where those, you know, there's the real steep cliffs and then almost to the wood line, there, there's like a little ramp there. And, and uh, I, yep. I just remember you hitting it first. I think Timmy kind of did the same yeah. thing. But, uh, yeah, definitely straight yeah. send it. Man. Yeah, that hill was, uh, at the time it hadn't been climbed, so it was a bounty hill. Uh, and it was at the finals rate. And I drew first, ah. and um, <laughs> so and, and I almost made it. So I actually um, gave it too much throttle, and so I talked about that I normally lift. Well, actually, I popped up and was kind of high. And if I'd have just let the car sit, I'd have been okay. But instead, I got a little goosed, and I gave it more throttle, and it came up and over, and I rolled off and down, and crashed pretty good. Yeah, that's that's uh. That's rough. Uh, Holden, yeah, Holden, Holden had a, a similar experience. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. let's see. Yeah. Jay, no, that's a tough one. Jay says his son Holden is going to be driving for him again this weekend, so you'll be you'll be racing against Jay's son. So that's cool. Um, uh, Holden, yeah. Jason Eldridge says Holden with the McTwist. <laughs> that, it, man, to to watch that in person was was insane. I, I've seen some. Some pretty bad wrecks this year. Daniel Heckley r rolling down off from uh, uh, Bikini Bottoms. I don't know if you got to see that that wreck where he broke his arm yeah, in three didn't places. I did see it, but I knew it was a bad one. But I yeah. didn't see the crash. Yeah, the, the footage is, is pretty uh, hard to watch. But, uh, you know, he, he's already back, man, already racing again. So uh, them, them Paraville boys, something about rock racing in Missouri, man. Y'all are a different breed. There's something in the water up there. You know what I mean? You all are just Paraville is 100% behind their their t you know their rock bouncers and it, it's uh, it's cool. Speaking of that, you know, is there is there who do you got to thank, man? There's got to be a ton of people that that uh, at least help you out in in one way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah. So uh, I get a lot of help. I've had a ton of help over the years. Um, so uh, you know, first I want to. Thank my family. Um, you know, it's been a lot of nights uh, over here at my shop where I'm at now. This isn't at my house. So I'm 30 minutes away from my house. Um, you know, like when I built this car this year, it was I was over here, you know, 15 hours a day. Um, and, uh, <laughs> so my wife and my daughter. Um, then I've got a uh, great group of friends that you know share the passion too. So uh, in fact, I'll I'm gonna take this thing and walk around. And we'll, I'll show your car a little bit. Please. Thank um, you. But I've got the, the while we're doing this. This is Kyle Keller. Hi, Kyle. Thanks so, for helping out, man. We appreciate it. I'm always helping out. So, so Kyle is uh, one of the guys that kind of got me into this racing game. So, uh, Kyle's got a buggy of his own. Uh, he's got a Jeep. Uh, when I met him, he had a, a CJ5 as well as what I had. Uh, and then his brother was uh, the one that co-drove with me and spotted for me in the Wee Rock. So they've done a lot of, you know, the whole time I've been doing this, they've been around helping me. So, um, you know, just people like that. Um, David Fox, he's my co-driver now. Um, you know, he drives up, he lives an hour and a half away, he drives up here and helps me. And uh, just, there's so many people that spend their time um, to help me because this is just time consuming. Just, you know, okay. crazy. You know, it's um, difficult to put everything together. It's expensive, all that, but the time is just nuts. Mm. 
a little bit of my engine. So, so this is Jimmy's Jimmy's four by four, which is in Colorado. Yeah, Cortez, Colorado. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bruce Woodward is asking, do you, do you do your testing at an off-road park? Um, so I do my testing at an off-road park when I'm at the off-road park to race. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, my, uh, my shop here is in, in the city limits of where I live. So, um, like we're going to do some testing too and I've got a parking lot I'll run out and I can do some rifting around or if I have to, uh, I'll get it on the road and go run around. So, um, but yeah, then I then we get out to the park and um, yeah, if I have to, uh, I'm 45 minutes away from S'more, you know, so there's a great park there, you know, I can go over there um, do whatever. But generally, um, I kind of know what needs to be done here. If it's an engine issue, I take it over to show me speed when running on their dive. So that's the best way to do that. But otherwise, uh, you know, just small, minor tweaks and tunes uh, we do on site at, at a race. Bit. Okay, uh, Eric, uh, where is it? He so Jimmy's four by four is in Colorado. Jimmy Smith is in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Bub Meadows. Hey, Derek, who's your top three drivers you like to watch in both bouncers and U fours? If you had to pick. Top three. Well, I guess I'd have to think about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the bouncers, we can start off uh, with the easy one, get that out of the way. It's Timmy. You know, he's, he's got the, the badass equipment. He's super good and super nice guy. And, um, you know, so I like competing against him. Um, one of my Missouri boys is fun to, to watch with. You never know what he's going to do. Well, Anthony Yacht. Um, you know, if I like, like racing with him and against him. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of them. You know, so Jay Storch, uh, he's got, you know, his old car. Uh, Shane Christensen with that loud, you know, noxious gold rush car. Uh, that's fun. I mean, there's, there's so many guys that uh, have great cars and uh, a bunch of horsepower and willing to lay it out. And, I mean, they're all fun. They also, uh, um, Alex Ray Sanders. Yeah, uh, you never know what he's gonna do. Yep. Uh, you know, I still remember down at Hot Pride, a few hills over from the one that I was telling about, I crashed on. He went and bombarded up that thing, tire flew off. He didn't. He never left. It. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I just, the tire <laughs> almost the finished the race for him. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I, I enjoy watching everybody. Um, Ultra Force, the same thing. You know, there's a bunch of guys there. Um, you know, a lot of the guys I know, I like to, to watch. And, and uh, learn from you know all these guys I'm watching and I'm learning from, um, you know, trying to figure things out. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of a lot of the guys like to ask also if you could uh, drive anybody else's rig. Whose would it be? Oh, uh, see, I hate that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I've never drove anybody else's car because I'm scared to death I'll break it. Yes. Yes. So, so I remember when Shannon Campbell had his first um, IFS car, and he had it down at S'more, and we did a race, and after the race, he said, you want, you want to drive it? No. no. <laughs> you know, they're saying, if you, can, if you can't afford to fix it, you, you probably should be in it. So, but Lee, I broke your car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Kyle, we built one car. Kyle took it out, ripped the steering duck off. Wow. Uh, you know, that's, that's what happened. Wow. So Levi Sherman took old Shannon Campbell up on that, came back, and the whole aluminum panel was ripped off the side of it. Epic. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of cars I'd like to drive, I guess, to see you. But, you know, the problem is, you know, you drive somebody else's car and you don't know it, and so, you know, you can't you can't treat it like you want to anyway. Right. Um, right. Sure, I wouldn't. I'd be too nervous, but I was going to crash it. Yeah. 
Yeah. I crash my own enough to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have that same policy as well. Uh, you know, getting to hang out with these guys. They're they're so so giving, man, and and they give you the shirt off their back and definitely the keys to their bouncer. And I, I'm I might take them up on it, but it's just gonna be like a rip up and down the parking lot, man, and that's it. Just go come back and yep. I'm good. I drove a bouncer. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's it. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, so you know, I've never even rode an IFS car to this day. Wow, so, 20 years in the game. So, yeah. That's crazy. My, uh, my wife has. She co-drove with Waylon Campbell in a race. Cool. So, That's so cool. Talk about how nice it was compared to mine. But. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> So, what about sponsors? Is is there, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned the the friends and family. Yeah. So you know, all these sponsors. Uh, most of these guys have been with me for years. Um, you know, so Nitto Tire, I've been with since like 2012. Um, without them, I probably would be done racing a long time ago. So they really helped me out a bunch. Give me four by four. Um, you know, still building these cars, doing everything that I do to support them and their team. They do one for them. Um, you know, I'd, I'd probably be, be done. Um, but uh, um, the PRP um, on my seats, my seat belt, uh, my limit straps, uh, on my tool bags, uh, they even make steering wheels. So, uh, they, they've got to know my spot. Uh, Warren for my winches, I ran Warren for um, a long time. Ran some rains in the beginning of the one. And I just love the way they preschool and the power they've got. Um, and I like them. Uh, slime products. Um, slime's been helping me uh, for just for one of the longest. Um, you know, so they've been a supporter um, for a long time. Uh, Trailworthy Fab. So I run a Hero two speed case. Um, super strong case. You know, what I was running before, I used to have to check it quite a bit. This thing I can run all year long. Um, not worry about it. That's one of the things that I did do on this car too, uh, to help with some of the rock bouncer events and my fear of lifting is um, I put uh, some bigger drive shafts in. So I've got 1480 yokes on that hero and on uh, I run mega high nines um, on the differentials and uh, put a little bit bigger drive line in there because you know, I felt like my drive, um, my axles could handle it. You know, I was a little worried about my drive shaft and yokes. So I've run the 1350 yokes, so we kept that up a little bit. Um, but um, Rugged radios, so I've got uh, intercoms uh, and then a radio, you know, which, you know, probably not a lot of rock bouncers have that, I, I would assume, but, you know, for what, what I do, I have a co driver. So we've got, uh, I actually wear earbuds, we can communicate back and forth, uh, which is super important when you lose your intercom, and it sucks. Uh, but, so we can talk, and then also we can talk back to our kids. So if we've got problems, we can tell them, we can tell them we want to come in for fuel. Um, they can tell us where we're at in the race. Uh, and Rugged's been with me a long time and, um, you know, really helped me a bunch and um, kept me straightened out. Um, fire tracks, uh, you know, I'm a housing, so also been a fire track a long time. Uh, Willwood, so do all Willwood uh, braking, rotors, um, <clears throat> master cylinders. Uh, they even make an extended pedal now. Um, so uh, for anybody that's got brakes uh, that aren't working right, uh, you know, I have problems. Will, what's got some stuff out there to fix it up. I know a lot of these guys are doing power brakes now. Uh, so my car does not have power brakes. I can lock it up. You know, so it's, it's um, and that, not that there's anything wrong with power brakes, but it just gives a weird feel and there's kickback and then it affects your steering. Um, you know, and so I, I'm, I've been real happy with them. Uh, I bought springs. Um, so um, I like their springs. Uh, they stay nice and straight. Uh, you know, if what I'm doing, I'm going for hours at a time, and so what I don't want is a spring that blows in and rubs all over my shop, uh, and starts rubbing holes through it. I uh, know so they make great springs to take care of that. Uh, ATI Performance, so I run their uh, ATI Super Case transmission, uh, which is a beefy case. I run a tr uh, Turbo 400. Okay. Um, with stock Turbo 400s, I was having some problems cracking them in the back. It wasn't a major problem, but if they start leaking, it was just, you know, pain. Um, but once I went to this, that stopped because the case is super tough. I run their core converter as well as their uh, flex plate. Um, 
course, uh, Edelbrock, I'm a supercharger. Um, Griffin Thermal Products is all my cooling. Uh, and then uh, Radflow on all my shocks. Um, you know, and I've been with Radflow uh, since I was running the, my Pro Modified car. So that's um, oh, about 12 years or so I've been, been working with them. Um, PSC for my uh, steering. Uh, so I run full hydraulic ram. I'm running there. Um, kind of a trophy truck pump. Uh, I used to run two steering pumps. Uh, when I went to their new pump, um, it's way better than what I had before. And, um, you know, so steering's important. <laughs> so when you're doing these wood classes, um, you know, now they're running up and back down and all these turns, and that steering's a big deal. Uh, you know, I think some of these rock concert guys are, you know, understand that, that, you know, they need to figure out how to do some better turning. Uh, laser star light, so I run kind of a signature blue light on the front of it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, big bar up at the top. That's my laser star. Uh, FK on all my rod ends. Um, so I've ran smaller rod ends. Um, had them hold off good. This car's got all inch and a quarter uh, rod ends on all the lanes. But um, there's a tie rod and my steering. Uh, or uh, not tie rod, but my uh, uh, sway bar Sorry. links. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things there. You know, those are smaller, they're half inch, you want a good quality one there. Um, you know, so back in the day I've had one of those break. Um, so you lose your sway bar, that's one thing. Uh, but the sway bar actually got my brake line, cut it. Uh, so I lost brakes, got that fixed, and then later on I rolled because my sway bar, you know, the car felt different. Sure. And I wasn't, it unloaded on me. And, you know, so just some little things, you know, good quality components everywhere is very important. Um, but uh, Stan Brandt Motorsports, um, you know, he's helped me out a bunch. Uh, in the past, we've done, um, you know, links and uh, all kinds of, of stuff, machine work that he does. Um, but, um, and then uh, Yukon Gear and Axle. Uh, so they're they're actually the ones that uh, I get my drive shafts from. Uh, so they make good quality drive shafts. Uh, I run their Super Joint. Um, which is, you know, super strong as long as you've got everything tight. Um, and those joints are they're really working good. Uh, and I run a lot of their uh, stuff with third member. Um, so um, then I've got uh, <coughs> so uh, running Dynamax exhaust. Yeah, hard to see it stinks out of here a little bit. Okay, <coughs> I see it there. Yep. Yeah, these guys are saying they, they are enjoying you showing us because uh, a lot of the times the, the guys will get on the show and, and they don't uh, take you around the buggy to to show us. So yeah, we appreciate that. that. But, uh, and then I've got a, uh, another friend of mine that I started racing with, Bill Bailey. Uh, he has uh, AMS Oil Signature Synthetics, and so he's, he's helped me out with oil for the year. Um, so now we're looking at my fuel cell. So I've got like a like a 44 gallon fuel cell. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is one that's definitely different than um, than some of the rock monsters. So I've got a lot of stuff going on back here. Um, you know, so I've got a huge radiator. Huge um, radiator. So big radiator. So spare tire. And when I'm doing rock mountain events, I don't take this off, and people probably wonder why because this car is tuned and it's balanced for this tire to be there. And so when I take it off, um, it's just off the point. It doesn't ride as good. You know, so yes, I'm carrying around 180 pounds or whatever, um, but I just I don't have it tuned for it to be without it. And to be honest, it's just more than what I want to do to be changing from event to event to do a shock tune. Uh, I'll tie off. But back here, I've got a little trunk that houses my uh, tools, and I carry like a spare serpentine belt, uh, some oil, that sort of thing. So. What, uh, who does your bump, who, where do you get your bumps from, your air bumps? Uh, those are Radflows. Okay. I should have, I should have figured that, but yeah, okay. Yeah, and then, uh, I use OEM, uh, Infinity on my, uh, engine management system, and I'm also running their gauges. Um. And I run circuit breakers. See everything. Yeah. So instead of having fuses, 
circuit breakers on the dash, so if I've got a problem, I can seal it and I can try to reset it. If it will reset. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it definitely looks like you've been racing, uh, you know, you, you have it the way that works for you, and I think that's so cool, man. So cool. Yep. Man, those spider housings are works of art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're dirty now. I need to get this thing all cleaned up. So this is all, all bare metal chassis. And uh, I've got in here and I've washed it once, but I need to, I need to get it all coated back up. But um, once it's all coated, everything looks nice. The spider tracks, axles look good. And, uh, this chassis is full chromoly. Okay. Uh, as well as the housings. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So it's it's been a great car. Yeah, you know, I really like it. I've only done a few races in it, and I've been. You know, I've got some new car blues trying to figure out. So right now we've got a little engine pickup we're trying to figure out. Uh, but otherwise, man, this car is um, it's a great car. I'm, I'm excited to get it, you know, where it goes more and more 100% mechanically where I can go out and race it and push it. Uh, so how long do you think this car will last you? Um, so my last cars I've kept for about five years each. Okay. So, uh, so... This car over here I ran for five years, one before that I ran for five years, and then the Pro Modified I had before that was five years. So, okay. so I guess I'm off on my timeline. So much of this company's been helping me for about 16 years, I guess, now that I think about it. Yeah. So. Wow. <clears throat> wow. The, uh, it, and at the end of that, are you moving on to a different car just because of wear and tear or because you're ready for something else? Well, so, you know, if I was really on top of game um you know like some of these guys guys are you're building the car every one to two years so five years is kind of stretching things out things things evolve things change um you know there's always the newest gadget widget whatever um but uh, you know i kind of like to settle into a car and know it and get it you know get it dialed in um you know sometimes it takes a year to get things all sorted out you know you get problems and yeah, so sometimes I, I don't know how guys like Timmy Cameron can race three races and then just scrap the build, build a whole new buggy in a month, and race it for the rest of the year and win win championships. <laughs> it's just I mean, so that's that's what Shannon Campbell used to do. Same thing, you build something if you didn't like it and it didn't work. What what's the point of going forward with this? We got to make a change. Yep. You know, if it's mid season, you you know you realize that you don't like it. Um, build what you do like. Yep, that's right. And, and that's that's what's innovative. That's why those guys are innovative, and they are the ones pushing the sport. Yep, that, that's absolutely right, man. And and it works for them. So how can you argue it? You know. Uh, let's see. Bub Bub Meadows is is asking if you're going to King of the Hammers. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we covered that, Bub. Uh, he's been racing King of the Hammers in one way, shape, or form since 2009. So I'm pretty sure we'll see him at uh, King of the Hammers this year. Christopher Billadu joining us. Uh, Jason Eldridge says, Nick, tell him I'm in Kansas City uh, and to look for me camped out at his shop. <laughs> Travis Skelton watching with us. Tim Perry, Dallas Girding. Uh, uh, David Shelley Fritz, Fritz Transmission, Maria Kimball, how are you, man? Well, listen, man, we've been going for about an hour now. Uh, I think we've, we're all caught up on questions from the crowd. Is there anything else that you want, anything we missed, or anybody else you'd like to thank? Um, oh, I'm sure I missed all kinds of stuff. So, uh, <laughs> there's, there's been so many people that have helped me over the years, and uh, so many companies, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to, hard to catch them all. Yeah, I, I hear you. Well, I, I'll tell you yeah. like I tell everybody else, Derek, you, you have a, an open invitation to come back on the show anytime. I, I am trying to make this show the rock racing news, if you will, uh, so if you have a hell of a race, so a win, or even a terrible race, I don't care, uh, and you want to come on and, and tell us about it, 
you have an open invitation, man. No doubt about it. Um, we we love this stuff. We live this stuff for the most part. Uh, so, you you know, anything that you'd ever have to, to say or tell us about would be welcome. That's for sure. Yeah, right on. I appreciate it. Definitely. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. You have a great rest of your uh, night. Good luck on the buggy, and good luck this weekend, too. Yeah, wish me luck getting this thing fixed. And if I can get it fixed, wish me luck this weekend. All right. We'll go out there and That's right. See if we can win something. Prayers inbound, brother. Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. See you. See you, Derek. Mr. Derek West, y'all. Man, Eric, I'm sorry I missed that. What's his fa favorite park? Uh, at, you know, ask him and, and tag him. I bet he'll answer it. Turn this volume down a little bit. Well, all right, everybody. Uh, I am going to get out of here. No show tomorrow. No show on Saturday. I've got to, uh, I'm going to be traveling a little bit. Uh, heading back east I'm gonna be there for a couple of weeks gonna get to spend some time with family so uh, that doesn't mean the show's gonna stop though uh, I'm going down to mom's house so she's gonna carve out a little space for me in the house and we're gonna continue on with the show y'all I have got a huge week planned for for uh, on the hill so definitely uh like i have to tell you but definitely be be watching out okay um <clears throat> i made myself some little reminders here so i didn't forget um I, I was kind of explaining to derek but uh with every new guest that we have we have new people that come on to the show and are checking it out for the first time uh i just want to give some friendly reminders uh, first of all, please share and, and like this as much as you can, y'all. Um, we, we don't really frequent a whole lot of Ultra 4. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, Ultra 4 groups. So if you know any uh, and don't mind, I'd really appreciate sharing in, uh, in some of those in some of those different groups that may not, you know, see the rock bouncing crowd. Uh, in what we do here on this show uh, also if you are interested in sponsoring the event to sponsoring the show I'm sorry if you're interested in sponsoring the show please hit me up uh, I am living the dream I am extremely blessed uh, but I don't want to just stop at where we're at now I want to continue to make this show better and better uh, and we are upgrading equipment, upgrading software. We're getting out to events now. So please, if you are interested or know anyone that's interested in uh, sponsoring the show, it, it doesn't have to be money. It, it can be a lot of things. So hit me up. Uh, hit me up personally. Message me how, however you want to do it and uh, let me know. Um, we have kind of a schedule that goes with this. Obviously, race weeks are a little bit more difficult to keep that schedule, but um, some some uh, events that happen that we try to stay consistent with during the week uh, is starting on Sunday, our Sermon on the Hill. It hasn't happened the last few Sundays, but uh, our pastor, Taylor Pickett from RPM Ministries, uh, he is working a different schedule right now, so we're um, waiting for him to get back on some uh, a normal schedule, uh, and then we'll bring some normalcy back to the Sermon on the Hill. Uh, but that is usually every Sunday. Uh, Tet Tuesday with Chuck and Rob up there in New Hampshire. It's RC-based, uh, but they always have some great topics to cover, and they're just fun guys to hang out with regardless. Um, and then on Fridays, with uh, we do the Feature Friday with Dylan from D-Pats Photography. Uh, basically what it is is uh, Dylan just picks one person that's part of the Rock Bouncing family, and he does a little write-up, includes some pictures and stuff. So um, very, 
very interesting segment there. Some other things that we have going on, uh, the Death Metal Garage giveaway for the uh, DMB, the Death Metal Bouncer. This is giving back, Rock Bouncers giving back, more specifically the RC crowd, Skinny Pedal Racing and Death Metal Garage chipping in on this one. We are going to auction this chassis off and that money is going to go towards paying for a wounded warrior to get out to uh, the National Rock Racing Association's finals out in Jay, Oklahoma at Mid-America. So that's exciting. Uh, and then, don't forget, a few months back we did the uh, RC Bouncer build-off. Basically what happened was, was Sean Keller or one of the Keller brothers or Sam or I, I don't know how it went down but either way RC Fabratory did a build off with Keller RC Performance and uh, it was epic y'all so we haven't forgotten about that uh, don't forget that Sam is up in Canada so it takes mail forever to get down here but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have both of those chassis at a race uh, and we are going to vote on them to see who wins. It's going to be exciting. So keep that, uh, keep that in, uh, uh, you know, in the back of your mind. And that is about it for me. Um, if I forgot anything, man, please remind me. But uh, I really appreciate all y'all checking in here. This has been a, a busy week. It's been a busy month, July into into August now. But uh, Rock Bounce has grown, y'all. So no rest for the weary, that's for sure. Huge shout-out, Team Six Racing. Brings us the hill. <laughs> I was trying to think of a way to put it, but, but basically uh, you are watching On the Mountain. Uh, correction. On the Hill with Nick and Friends. Uh, brought to you by Team Mod 6 Racing. We are also sponsored by Black Dog Photography, D Pats Photography, High Octane Films, Canyon Coolers, Cash LaCroix Racing, Eagle Eye Productions, man. All these guys are starting to chip in. My sponsorship list is growing, and I, I, uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, Another one more shameless plug. Uh, I also do a show on the National Rock Racing Association's page. It's called The Starting Line. We usually do that on Mondays. Um, on race weeks, it'll be a good, uh, a good time to check out the drivers list that we have going into the week. Uh, on non-race weeks, it'll be just a good news update, if you will. Okay, so be watching out for that. Uh, Zach Hilgore, no doubt busy. Yeah, absolutely, man. We're running, but uh, it is it is a, an absolute dream come true to be talking, dealing with what, however you want to call it, living rock bouncing. Uh, 100%, man. I, I, I couldn't be more blessed. Absolutely. All right, everybody, I'm going to get out of here. I love all y'all. Uh, again, we're going to be off tomorrow and Saturday, but uh, Mr. Jamie Coldiron is going to join us on on Sunday for a special Sunday episode. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Jamie is always entertaining. That's for darn sure. I love everybody, man. Y'all stay tuned. Uh, you know, we'll be back very soon. <laughs>